So in, in this talk, I'm going to introduce you a new tutorial for Open3D Engine that uh, will be released soon in next days. I will describe the reasoning behind uh, its development and give uh, you some preview of the final result that you can obtain at the end of the tutorial. Before starting, I would like to uh, do a quick recap about uh, my journey using O3D. I've started back in July 2021 when the engine was uh, announced for the first time. And I was mainly uh, curious about differences and strict points of this new brand engine with the other existing one. Over the years, uh, I made uh, several experiments in my free time, exploring different aspects of the engine architecture in order to test its feasibility in order to be used as a part of a more complex solution in the educational sector. My exercises ranged from a tool to use the engine inside the containers to more traditional mini games for the two O3D gems passing through some custom gems to enhance the daily workflow to create a game. Some of these projects are open source and are available on my GitHub profile. So if you are interested, you can check them out. Today, I want to show you the latest of my experiments. That is a series of video tutorials that will teach you how to create a basic uh, prototype of a steel game using only the built-in feature of, uh, of 3D. This is uh, the first of a collection of more dedicated tutorials about game development that we will be available uh, later this year. But uh, before starting, we have to um, do a question, and what is a steel game? When uh, you, we speak about uh, steel games, uh, you probably think about some popular sagas such as Metal Gear Solid, Splinter Cell, or Thief. Despite all their settings, they all share some core gameplay mechanics that we can try to solace. There is, uh, of course, uh, a player that is controlled by users and he needs to reach a destination point in order to complete a mission such as collecting an item, deactivating a system or rescue a partner. The main settings uh, is usually a uh, interior of a building or uh, an open environment with uh, many alley. In our case, we can simplify it with a simple maze. There are multiple routes that the player can choose between to reach his goal. The distance isn't the only factor that he has to take into account. In fact, we, the, the level is patrolled by uh, enemies that can catch the player. A steel game is usually designed to penalize the player when the enemy spots him, suggesting to keep a low profile and avoid them. Now that we have understood what a steel game is, it's important to define some goals and constraints that will lead the development of this tutorial. Firstly, it must be as easy as possible for users to start following the tutorial. No external dependency or asset will be used in order to lower the risk of installation error and other incompatibility over time. This approach limits the final look of the project, but it also gives a chance to focus on the core mechanics. Please note that when the basics are acquired, it becomes straightforward to expand the project according to the specific needs. The tutorial will be used as start 
testing template by users that want to build uh, their own steel game. So it must describe uh, which step are required to implement basic gameplay feature within the engine. But at the same time, it does not to go into too much details in order to become boring from experienced users. Instead, for uh, complete beginners to gain development, dedicated content will be available later in the future. O3DE relies upon an entity component uh, architecture and use uh, other patterns that, that are very common in game industry. However, it also has its own specific uh, characteristics that may not be so straightforward at uh, the 4C, such as uh, the event bus system. This tutorial uh, will try to highlight this unique feature and how to use them in the expected way. Finally, we have to remember that in game development, uh, and more generally in programming field, um, there are multiple ways to implement the same feature. Uh, we will select only the easiest one in terms of readability, keeping in mind that there could be more efficient solutions when considering runtime performance. These optimizations are usually specific for each individual project, so they will be out of scope for this tutorial. Let's now get back to, to the game. And uh, this time we try to identify the main topics that the tutorial should include according to the objective that we had just set. Firstly, how to design the maze directly in O3D Editor. We leverage the prefab system and the white box gem to quickly pro prototype multiple layout to, for uh, the maze. Then, how to create the player controller. We read input values from the keyboard and convert them to player movements. This involves interacting with the physics system since the player should not be able to pass through walls. Finally, how to create an enemy that can patrol the maze. His behavior is limited to pick our destination from a list of predefined points and use the built-in navigation system to, more, to move reliably. If the player is spotted uh, along the way, the enemy becomes alerted and starts chasing him. I would like to make a final remark on how topics will be described. For each one, there will be three phases that are linked to dedicated videos. Firstly, we analyze the goals that we want to reach in the topic. We will use a, a visual representation to understand which of the components will need to be used and how they interact with each other. Then we see how to configure the components inside the editor interface and according to the preferred scripting language, how to implement the core gameplay mechanics. Finally, we list some additional feature that you can try to implement on your own in order to extend the prototype to your needs. I've created a quick demo in order to see what is the final result. We can see that the player is moved by pressing arrows in, on the keyboard. The gray area is the detection area of the enemy. And when the player is entering into it, he has to escape. This is a very basic game, as you can see, but you can also extend on your own. For instance, in this example that will be available later, I tried to replace the primitive assets with more detailed one and add to the demo 
some additional uh, feature like uh, animation on the character, some obstacles that the player can interact so it can disable the laser gates. And instead of using a circle to detect the player, uh, we will use a line of sight in order to understand where are obstacles and where the player can hide. Thank you. If you have any question. Are you planning to release this as like a paid course or as a free? Uh, it will be for free. Thank you.